sinusoidal functions are functions that are related to sine and cosine by transformations like stretching and shrinking and shifting. This video is about graphing these functions. Let's start by graphing the function y equals 3 sine of 2x. This function is related to the function y equals sine x, so I'll graph that first. Now the 3 on the outside stretches this graph vertically by a factor of 3, while the 2 on the inside compresses it horizontally by a factor of 1 half. If instead I want to graph y equals 3 sine 2x plus 1, this plus 1 on the outside shifts everything up by one unit. Let's compare the midline, amplitude, and period of our original y equals sine x, our transformed y equals 3 sine 2x, and our further transformed y equals 3 sine 2x plus 1. The original sine has a midline at y equals 0, an amplitude of 1, and a period of 2 pi. For the transformed function, y equals 3 times sine of 2x, the 2 on the inside shrinks everything horizontally by a factor of 1 half. So it changes the period of 2 pi into a period of 1 half times 2 pi, which is pi. Since the 2 on the inside only affects x values and horizontal distances, it doesn't affect the midline which is a y value, or the amplitude, which is a vertical distance. But the 3 on the outside does affect these things. Well, in particular, it affects the amplitude. Since everything is stretched out vertically by a factor of 3, the amplitude of 1 gets stretched to an amplitude of 3. In this case, the midline doesn't actually change, because multiplying a y value of 0 by 3 is still a y value of 0. Now on the third function, we've taken the second function and added one on the outside, so that shifts everything up by one. Therefore, instead of having a midline at y equals zero, we now have a midline at y equals one. The amplitude doesn't change though, it's still three, because shifting everything up by one doesn't affect the distance between the midline and the, and the maximum point. Also, the period is still pi, since the period is a horizontal measure, and adding one on the outside only affects vertical things. Next, let's graph the function y equals 3 times sine of 2 times quantity x minus pi over 4. This function is very closely related to the first function we graphed on the previous page. That was y equals 3 sine of 2x. In fact, if we give the name f of x to that function, and maybe we can call g of x this other function, then we can get g of x by taking f of x and plugging in x minus pi over 4 in for x. In other words, g of x is f of x minus pi over 4. This relationship gives me an idea for graphing g of x, the function we want to graph. We can first graph f of x, we already did that on the previous page, and then we can shift its graph to the right by pi over 4, because that's what you do when you subtract a number on the inside of a function. So here's the graph of y equals 3 sine 2x. Recall that it's just the graph of sine stretched vertically by a factor of 3 and shrunk horizontally by a factor of 1 half. Now, to graph the function that I want, I'm going to shift this graph over by pi over 4 to the right. Notice that since I had my function written in factored form, I could just read off the horizontal shift. But if I had written it instead as y equals 3 sine 2x minus pi over 2, which is algebraically equivalent, it would be easy to get confused and think that I needed to shift over by pi over 2. So it's best to factor first before figuring out what the shift is. We're factoring out the coefficient of x. If instead we wanted to graph this function, 
same as the one we just graphed, it's just with a minus one on the outside, that minus one would just bring everything down by one. Let's take a moment to look at midline, amplitude, and period for the original parent function y equals sine of x and our final transformed function y equals 3 sine of 2 times quantity x minus pi over 4 minus 1. Our original sine function has midline at y equals 0, amplitude of 1, and period of 2 pi. For our transformed function, the 3 on the outside stretches vertically, so it makes the amplitude 3. The minus 1 on the outside shifts everything down by 1, so it brings the midline, y equals 0, down to y equals negative 1. The 2 on the inside shrinks everything horizontally by a factor of 1 half, so the period becomes 1 half times 2 pi, which is pi. Finally, there's a horizontal shift going on. Our transformed function shifts to the right by pi over 4. This horizontal shift is sometimes called the phase shift. The function we just analyzed was y equals 3 sine 2 x minus pi over 4 minus 1, which could also be written as y equals 3 sine 2 x minus pi over 2 minus 1. This is a function of the form y equals a sine bx minus c plus d, where b is positive. If we have a function of this form or the similar function with cosine in it, then we know that the midline is going to be at y equals d. That's because the original midline of sine or cosine at y equals 0 gets shifted up by d. We know that the amplitude is going to be a, because this a multiplied on the outside stretches everything vertically by a factor of a. To be a little more accurate, we should say the amplitude is the absolute value of a in case a is negative. If a is negative, then that amounts to a vertical reflection or a reflection over the x-axis. We know that the period of the original sine or cosine is 2 pi. And we know that this factor of b amounts to a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 over b, or I guess it could be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over b if b is less than 1. So because we're starting with a period of 2 pi and we're multiplying by 1 over b, our new period is going to be 2 pi over b. The trickiest thing is the horizontal shift. And to get that right, I like to factor out this b from my equation. So instead of writing y equals a cosine bx minus c plus d, I'm going to write y equals a cosine b times quantity x minus c over b plus d. Similarly, if it's a sine function, I write y equals a sine b times x minus quantity c over b plus d. Then I can read off the horizontal shift as c over b, and that'll be a shift to the right if c over b is positive and a shift to the left if c over b is negative. This might seem backwards from what you're used to, but it's because we have that minus sign there. So if c over b is positive, we're actually subtracting on the inside, so that shifts right. If c of b over b is negative, minus a negative is actually adding something, and that's why it shifts it to the left. So as one final example, say I wanted to graph y equals one-third cosine of one-half x plus three minus five. That would have a midline at y equals minus five, an amplitude of one-third, a period of 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is 4 pi, and a horizontal shift. Hmm, better rewrite this. A horizontal shift 
of six units to the left. The horizontal shift is sometimes called the phase shift. And that's all for graphs of sinusoidal functions.